Let's take a look at some of the mathematical operations that you can perform on, a, on an array. I'll begin here by creating a small array that we can work with. So I'll fill in some values and then rename this control as A. Now if we take the array and pass that through a node, for example the square, square root calculation, then the square root is computed for each of the elements inside the array. And we can see that showing up on the indicator. Now, if I wanted to multiply my array by a constant, then notice I have two different types coming into the multiplier. I have a, a 1D array and then a scalar value. And if we look at the output after running it, we see that the constant 5 has been applied to each element in the array. What I'm illustrating here is supposing we had already attached the array to the multiply and then we said create a, a constant. Now it defaults to showing us a array constant which oftentimes is not as easy to work with as just a scalar constant. So the way to deal with that is temporarily disconnect the array from the multiply node, create the constant, and then reconnect. Sometimes that can be a little challenging to get the wiring tool to cooperate. There we go. Incidentally, I'm doing control and then click and drag, and that's how I did the copy on that array, which is kind of nice because it preserves all of the values that I already typed as well. Now my array B, I'm adding some additional elements so that it's intentionally longer than array A. And let's take a look at what happens then when you perform an operation on these two arrays. Okay, we see the product has a total of five elements, which is the same size as the number of elements in A. So if you do an operation on A when it has an additional element, so it has a total of six now, we see that we have six in our resulting array. So what we learn here is that the output is always the shorter of the two incoming arrays. Next, let's take a look at some techniques that use time as a function. And ultimately what I'll be creating here is um, essentially something like e to the minus t over tau, a common math operation. As we look at this ramp generator sub vi, we see it has a variety of terminals for our use. Now I'll begin by creating some controls here. And I'll just jump ahead and create controls for all the inputs. And the ramp generates a 1D array. And we can specify the total number of samples. Let's make this a little bit smaller than, than the default. And we then start specify the start and end values. All right, so we see that it generates a linear ramp between 0 and 1. If I exclude the endpoint, then it, uh, as we see here, it does not quite get up to 1. And this can be useful if you're trying to concatenate multiple ramp patterns together. Let's also view the 1D array as a waveform.
Now, as I said earlier, I wanted to explore doing a uh, exponential based on the ramp now being thought of as our time vector. So here's my exponential operation. And if I'm trying to form e to the minus t over tau, I'll need some additional uh, operations here as well. So the first thing I'll do is take the ramp output and negate it. So now we have minus t. And then I will divide that by a constant. Actually, let me wait on that from the earlier lesson. I'll go ahead and create my constant first on one terminal. That's the one labeled the Y terminal. And then I go ahead and attach my array input to the X terminal. So now we have minus T over tau and connect that to the exponential. And that gives us our E to the minus T over tau. And let's just confirm the shape there after we run the, run the VI. And that looks familiar. And I can change my time constant tau and get some different values. Uh, incidentally, if you right click on the axis and uncheck the auto scale Y, when you double click the lower limit as being zero, then it will actually stay there when you run the, the VI repeatedly. So that gives you some ideas of math operations you can perform on arrays.